guys, welcome to the SRNR trim training video. What I have before me is a bunch of trim. Everything that we work with on a daily basis. Um, everything from door casing to OG to handrail to deco for the cabinets. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of this stuff in detail and then we're going to show you a few cuts and um, you know stuff that you're going to use every day that you guys have asked questions about. Uh, we're just trying to hear, be here on film to answer all those questions for you. Um, okay, let's get started. Okay, the board I'm holding right here in my hand is a uh, casing. For this goes on your doors. Um, I mean, that's the, the only thing you're going to use on doors. You're also going to use this on your dryer vents. Um, this piece right here is your baseboard. This is on a, a regular um, upgrade. The upgrade case, uh, board gets is longer. It's about five inches wide. But this is a standard that comes in most uh, houses these days that we build. This piece right here has this rounded over edge and it's flat. This is window stool. This is what goes in the bottom of the windows and they pick it, take a piece of door casing put underneath it, kind of like this. So it looks really nice and pretty. Um, this piece we have here next is crown molding and you can see how it does not end flat. It has these two grooves on it and so there's no flat edge on it anywhere. Um, this is the decorative molding that goes up on your ceilings uh, and the wall at the top. This is a shoe mold, regular shoe mold, and the difference between regular shoe mold and deco shoe mold, which is this one over here, is regular shoe mold is prime white. The decorative shoe mold is gonna be the color of the cabinets that are in the house, so that's a good thing to know. This little piece of trim is called lattice. It goes on the stair stringers. And on top of the stair stringers of the lattice piece goes OG. The OG piece sits upside down on the, on the lattice just like that. So, um, and this, this piece here is used on shadow boxes, it's used on stairs, it's used on uh, bar tops. Um, so this piece of trim right here we use quite a bit on little finishing trim work. Um, this piece right here is chair rail, back, chair rail backer board. Um, it supplies the back surface for your actual chair rail, which is this piece. So the chair rail sits on top of it just like that to get a really cool reveal. I don't know if you can both see that. But um, so this is the chair rail and the chair rail backer. That's a two part trim. Um, then we have a, what they call a bread loaf handrail. This is solid oak, but it looks like a loaf of bread right here. That's why they call it the bread loaf. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to cut that, how we want it to go into the walls. All this trim right here, I'm just gonna grab all of it. This is all cabinet trim. As you can see, it's all black. This is the toe kick that goes underneath the bottom of the cabinets where your toes are. That's why they call it the toe kick. It goes down there on your toes. I have a decorative piece of shoe mold that goes um, next to the toe kick and it surrounds the cabinets. Um, just a word of advice for you guys. I think it's super tacky if you put your vertical pieces first and then your shoe mold Second, always put your shoe mold around your house first and then around the cabinets first and then put the vertical pieces on because it's uh, really annoying. It looks terrible when you do that. Um, then we have a piece of scribe here that goes over the front flats and then we have a 45 degree angle piece that um, goes on the 45 degree corners for your, for your cabinet island. This is the corner piece that goes on the outside edge. You see that corner. So now I guess we'll get into cutting some of this showing you guys how to do it. Okay, so a couple of the normal cuts that we do on OG are going to be 45s to make a 90 degree turn or a 22 to make a 45 degree turn. And then I want to show you guys how to do a return as well. So uh, first of all, this is already cut at a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that again. You just want to turn your saw to the 45 degree mark on your saw and go to cut. I'm going to put my earplugs in. So we have a nice 45 degree cut. All right, so now if you wanted to make a 
22 degree cut. Let's do it this way first. I want to show that 90 degree angle. So I'm going to show a flat, I cut a flat piece. So we have a flat piece and then we're going to make another 45 degree angle to the other side of that, which we'll have to do upside down. Okay, so now we're going to move that to the 45 and we're going to cut that. So now we have, that makes a 90 degree turn on an end. Everybody see that? Okay, so now we're gonna make a 22 degree turn. So you put it on 22.5. Not expecting your saw to do that. So that's a 22 degree angle right there. And then we're gonna cut the opposite 22 degree angle. And now what you have is a 45 degree turn. So that's two 25 degree, uh, 22.5 degree angles. That's that. All right, so uh, with the OG, what we want to do is I want to show you guys how to do a return. Um, a lot of times when this goes to the end of a cabinet or a, a bar top, uh, you need to be able to know how to return it because it looks terrible if you just end it off the flat, you know, if you just cut it off flat. So I'm going to show you how to do that return real quick. So you're going to set your piece of trim on the, the flat part of the base of the saw. You're going to move your saw bevel down to 45 and you're gonna cross cut it like this. That gives you this open face piece right here, going backwards, which is usually not what you wanna do, but in this case you do. You're gonna bring your saw back up to zero, and you're gonna cut it. You flip the piece of trim upside down, so the upside down piece is flat against the bottom of the saw, because you cut it like this a minute ago, so you're flipping it over and cutting it like this. This time you're gonna cut it right along that flat edge. It's gonna give you this little piece right here. This is your return piece. So then you take your other piece and you move it to wherever the other side is, which I already have one cut, but I'll show you the angle. You're gonna cut it to the opposite side and go for it, cut it 45 degree angle just cut it. It's already cut here. So when you cut that and you cut this little piece that I told you about and you put them together, you get a nice clean return. So it looks like a flat board all the way around. If you were to caulk and paint that, it's pretty, but that's, that's the finished product, what you're looking for, a return. So this goes up flat, but flat against the wall and it looks like the trim just turns around the wall and, and dies on the wall instead of it being flat cut like this on the end of a wall. So, okay, so that's a return. Moving on, I wanna show you guys how to cut um, the handrails. So let's do that next. What I like to do is cut a 45, 22, and a 22 to make it look like it's going into the wall versus a 90 degree where it just dies into the wall. Um, so what you gotta do to do that is you're gonna set your bread loaf handrail on your saw and move it to a 45 degree angle and make that cut. Hit some hard material there. And then your handrail bracket's gonna run you out about two and three quarters from the inside. So you're gonna measure that. And then you're gonna go opposite 22 and a half.
and then make that cut on that mark. Now you're going to turn your saw the opposite direction on the other side of the zero to 22 and a half and then cross cut that. When you put that together, you have a handrail that dies into the wall. So this part right here will be your wall. And this is where your wall will attach, your, your handrail will attach to the wall. And then your bracket will go underneath it to the wall itself. So I always double check this measurement. It's two and three quarters on the house I was at. So uh, this is, this is uh, you always want to make sure you measure that inside piece to where the center of your handrail bracket is going to mount to the bottom of this handrail. Okay, so that's a, how I want you to do it, the handrail. We'll move on to um, the baseboard and coping. So with baseboard, a lot of you guys have expressed a, a need to know how to cope. And when you need to use a coping saw is when you get to a piece, a house, and there's a piece of trim that's already installed that looks like this. It's flat on the edge of the wall and it's flat on the other end of the, the other end of the wall. There's no 45 degree angle where you can tie into it. Um, a lot of you guys want to uninstall this piece and cut a 45 and then 45 your other piece into it. Um, if you have a coping saw, it's a lot easier just to cope the piece that you're going to add to it. So if you had a flat piece, so we're going to cut us a flat piece, just for example. So that's our flat wall piece. And we want to cope this piece because it's flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the other side. I'm going to cut another blank piece. So I have this flat piece, so now I'm going to cut this on a 45 degree angle. Alright, so here we go, 45 degree angle. So now you have this 45 degree angle on a flat piece. What you want to do is because how you usually join this piece, there's going to be a 45 degree angle here. But instead, you're going to cope this whole thing out right here so it fits up against that baseboard. So on the next one we're going to do is we're going to do chair rail backer and then the piece of chair rail. How that goes is this little bottom piece right here is always on the bottom. So when you have this piece already mounted, your top is going to basically fit right across there to make this joint cockable on the top right there as it goes across. But I want to show you how to, how to kill this into a wall where it flats. Basically, you're just going to return this, and then you're going to return one of these, one of these pieces into this back piece. The back piece, remember, is the backer. This is the chair rail itself. So we're going to kill this piece using the same angles as the handrail, the bread loaf handrail. We're going to use that to make it look like it's coming out of this piece of wood. It's a really cool look, and this is kind of how I want you guys to do it if you get in a situation where you have to do uh, chair rail. Okay, so we're going to first of all remove this so we can do a return. saw to the other side. Cut that flat. Flip it over. Go back up to zero. And cut that flat angle back down. We just got through cutting that piece. We're bringing them together. And you have a really nice marriage right there that goes flat up against the wall. So that's that piece. So you're going to go back a half inch. We're going to go back a half inch and measure what that length would be for this board. 
So we're gonna go back a, actually we're gonna go back a whole inch on both sides. So I'm gonna go back one inch on either side, which is where I wanna kill this. So then I'm gonna get an overall measurement. It's gonna be 20, 23, 23 inches. So we're gonna take and we're gonna cut this out of 45 on the inside. So next we're gonna move this to a 23 degree angle and we're gonna cut this board down. So that when you put these together, you can set that one down there like that. And then you take this top piece and you cut it down. You flip it back over and you cut it down at a 45 or a 22 degree angle again. So when you put this whole thing together, you have a pretty piece of trim that looks like it's coming out of this board. And that's how it would look. So you have a 45 and a 22 and a 22. And then here you have the return on the bottom of the base. All right, so we got done with the chair rail. Now we're gonna go to the shoe mold. Um, shoe mold is pretty self-explanatory. I do want you to know that um, we use shoe mold pliers uh, the thing I want you to know about shoe mold is that shoe mold is way different than quarter round. If you notice, it's got a short end and then a long end. If you have a uh, quarter round, it's the same on both sides, so it's bigger. Um, so I do want you to know that. So if you're talking to somebody about quarter round versus shoe mold, you need to make sure you get shoe mold. Um, all right, so on this tool, you can see that it's got a 45 degree angle, a 22 and a half degree angle, and a zero. Um, like I said earlier, if you're cutting an angle for a 45 degree angle, you have to cut it at a 22 and a half. So I'm gonna show you how this works. You just basically sit this on here at a 45 degree angle and snip, you got a 45 degree angle. Now, if you wanted to cut one in the opposite direction, same thing, you set it on the opposite side and you cut. Now, if you wanted to make a 90 degree angle, you can set that on a 45 cut and then you bring this piece together and you've got a corner. Now if you wanted to make a 22 degree angle, we're going to pick this piece back up and cut it. that's gonna give you your 45 degree angle. So basically this thing's pretty self-explanatory. It's really cool, you don't even have to use your saw most of the time, you need to use, a, all you need to use this really is a tape measure and a pencil. Um, and you only need the tape measure if you're doing inside angles, if you're doing outside angles, you just cut your first angle like this, stick it up against the next angle and then make that mark and then just snip it. So um, this one tool took two hours off of my day every day. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that we find all the time that helps us make us more efficient to get in and out of houses that makes our customers happier, uh, that kind of thing. Okay guys, well that concludes our trim training video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you have any questions, just see one of your leaders and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll answer those questions for you. And then um, we hope you can use this in the field every day. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.